guys, welcome back to Geography Explained Online, we're with you today to go through another geographical skill that comes up in both junior geography and senior geography, and that skill is... Population pyramids. Another chance to do the Illuminati Triangle. So population pyramids are really great because they show us a lot about a population, as well as age structure and gender structure. It can also tell us about the health, education, conflict possibly that's occurring within a country. And we can look at it over time as well because it's constantly changing. Uh, like Samantha said, it's from year 7 to year 12, this skill, very common, very popular, pretty easy to do. But once you know how to read a population pyramid, the best thing about it is just with a glance, you can kind of get a feel for things that are going on in that country. What sort of country it is. Is it developed? Is it developing? Rich, poor, long-lived, high birth rate, low birth rate. You can know all of that within a second of looking at a population period once you know how. We're going to show you all the things you need to know today to properly analyse the population pyramid and answer a bunch of questions that could come up in your HSC. So, let's go to the smartboard. Hey dear squad, so we're here looking at a population pyramid and I'm just going to run through basically what it all means, what all the different sections are. So this is a very typical shape of a population pyramid that we would have found when population pyramids were first created and quite a typical shape for a developing country. But we'll talk about that a little bit later in our video. First of all, we're just gonna look at what the parts all mean. So you can see that our population pyramid is broken into two distinct parts, a blue part and a pink part. In this case, and I'm pretty sure you can guess this, the blue part represents the males in this certain country, which is Ethiopia, and the pink represents the females in Ethiopia. As well as being broken up by females and males, it's also broken up on our y-axis over here by age groups. So it starts at 0 to 4, 5 to 9, 10 to 14, all the way up to 100 plus. As well as that, one last thing that we need to look at is right up in the top uh, right hand side here, we've got a total population. So the total population of Ethiopia sorry, is 109 million. Along our x-axis down the bottom, it shows the percentage of the population in each age group, in each gender. So a really common question you might get when asked just to read a population pyramid is, what is the gender, sorry, what is the percentage of girls in Ethiopia aged zero to four? So all you would need to do is find the zero to four age group on a y-axis, come over to the female side, which in the side is pink, and read off the percentage at the bottom, which is 6.9%. Another question you could get a little bit tricky, you just need to do a simple addition, is what is the total population, or sorry, total percent of all people in Ethiopia aged between zero and four? So what we need to do then, again, find the zero to four category on our y-axis. But on the male side, we've got 7.1% of the population is aged zero to four. On the female side, 6.9%. So we simply need to add those together. Add them together and you're gonna find the population percentage of the total for all people aged zero to four. However, there's one more thing you could be asked just simply reading, and that is to tell me how many people aged 0 to 4 are there in Ethiopia. So not as a percentage, but as a total of the whole population. So I'm going to have to pass over to Sisio, and he's going to show you how to convert percentage over to a total number. How are we, peeps? Very common question that we get with population pyramids is you are given a percentage of a population and try to, you can work it out that, as the total. So in the 40 to 44 year age group for males, we have 2.2% of the population are represented in that part of the population pyramid. And you might get asked how many people actually is that? So here's what we do. We need a couple of numbers. We need the total population of Ethiopia, which as you can see is 109 million plus of a few. And we need how many people are just in that fraction. Now, pay attention because the question might say male, might say female, but it might just say people. If it said people in the 40 to 44 year age group, we'd have to add both together, which would be 4.4. But this question is just males at 2.2. How do we do that? With some arithmetic, some mathematics. Pretty simple, okay? Get my trusty whiteboard marker. So how many males are there? We have 2.2% of the population. So we go 2.2 over 100, because that would be 100%. 2.2 over 100 times the total population of Ethiopia, which is 109,406,328. So, off the top of my head, that would be 2,406,939.2. Stop it. I'm, well, I'm pretty no. I'm smart. I'm I... Stop it, just here, okay? I knew you were cheating. Yeah, no, I'm good at math. So pretty easy calculation. 
um, and one that you'll probably have to do um, in, a skills, in a skills test. Now that we've looked at how to read a population pyramid, looking at the different genders and the different ages, it's now important to look at what a population pyramid tells us as a whole about a different population. What it tells us about fertility, mortality, and what it tells us about life expectancy. And we can tell all of these things. We can tell quite a lot just by looking at the population pyramid of a place. So what we're gonna look at behind us is Ethiopia, which we're still using. And this is a very typical shape for what we call a developing country. So a lesser economically developed country. A country that is still struggling with healthcare and education, is still struggling to develop. They've probably got higher rates of poverty and a really high fertility rate. Fertility rate is the first thing we can look at in a population pyramid. And we look at that as this bottom bit down here, the zero to four age group. If the zero to four age group is really wide, as you see in a pyramid, it's wide at the bottom and goes up, that means a lot of babies are being born in that country, which probably means that education system is not too fantastic. There's not really great access to contraceptions and healthcare. And these things are usually associated with a developing country. When we look at a developed country next, you'll notice that the bottom part, the fertility rate, is much more narrow because not as many children are being born per woman. The next thing we need to look at is the side. So that's called the base. The next part we look at is the side. And there's two shapes we can have. The first shape, what we see here in Ethiopia is what we call a concave. So it concaves in like this. It doesn't go straight up, it actually concaves in. And what that means is, unfortunately, it means that there's a high mortality rate. So people are, are dying um, and they're not making it to the uh, full age that they could. And this is usually associated with lesser access to health services. And then the last thing we look at, so we've got the base, the side here, which is concave. We look up the top of the peak and we look here, how many people are in that 90 to 95, 100 plus age range. And that tells us a lot about life expectancy. How old are people expected to live in Ethiopia? So if we have a look here, um, there's nobody in the 90 to 94 category. It doesn't even make up a percentage. And we've got 0.1% in the 85 to 89, which when we compare this to a developed country like Australia, which we'll do next, you'll notice that that's a very low life expectancy. Again, with a clear link to healthcare and education. Moving across to Australia now, we've got a developed country, a more economically developed country, with very good health infrastructure, health services, very good and free education system, right through from kinder to grade 12. And you'll notice it's a very different shape. It's not so much a pyramid anymore. It's becoming uh, much more box-like almost in its shape. So let's go through the same things that we did with Ethiopia. Down the bottom of our base, you'll notice it's much more narrow. There's actually less people being born here now then were born, you know, a generation or two ago. And this was because of the baby boom, which you can look at in a bit more detail. So the zero to four category only makes up about 3.4% on the male side and 3.2% on the females. When we get to our side bit, which tells us mortality, it's not concaving in, it's actually convexing. It's convexing out, which shows us that people are surviving well into middle age, well into adulthood. So that means that the mortality rate is pretty low and people have a good access to healthcare um, and good living standards as well. Not many people live in, in poverty. The last part we need to look at for life expectancy is the very top, the peak of our population pyramid. Um, in the 95 to 99 category, remember in Ethiopia there was no, it was 0%. In Australia, it's 0.1%. Okay, in the 90 to 94, it's 0.2. Again, in Ethiopia, that was zero. So not even 1% or 0.1% of the population was living to 90 to 94. And then if we come down, 85 to 89, it's 0.5% for males, 0.5% for females. Comparing that to Ethiopia, where it was only 0.1. And this was the peak in Ethiopia of their life expectancy of their country. So this tells us a lot. And straight away, just looking at the shape, if you see a shape like this compared to our pyramid shape before, you know straight away that what you're looking at is a developed country with good health infrastructure, good health services, good education, and really high living standards. A really interesting thing we can do with population pyramids is actually look at how certain events, conflict, famine, disease, all of these things can impact on a population pyramid. And if it's been a really critical event, you can see that event in the shape of that population pyramid. So I'm gonna hand over to Sissio and he's gonna show you how we look at different uh, dips and what that shows us about a population with a couple of examples. Okay. Two very important things in understanding a population pyramid and how to read them is understanding what a dip is and understanding what a bulge is. Oi sir, what's a dip? I'm so glad you asked. All right. A dip is a part of the population pyramid that is basically missing. There are 
basically there should be people here, but there aren't. It usually means that something very bad has happened in this country. I've just pulled up the 1965 population pyramid of Russia. Um, Russia was severely affected by World War II. Uh, 50 million people total died in World War II. Half of them were Russian by far the biggest loss of life of any country. And because of that, we have a bunch of people, a bunch of Russians not here that used to be. So we've got, first we've got a bit of a dip here, it really dips down quickly from there. And these are the 40 to 45 year old age group that 20 years previously, at the end of the war, were the 20 to 25 year olds that had just been fighting and obviously been killed in, in the war. Now, there's a second dip here, which is also very interesting. It is the 20 to 24 year old age group, men and women, all, they're just not there. Why is that? The reason is that's an echo of the first dip. 20 years previous, all the zero to 20 to 25 year olds weren't having babies, they were fighting a war and dying in a war. So you have this massive drop in the babies born in that five year period. 20 years later, when they're 20 year old, you have a big dip here representing the babies that were never born. This dip is the people killed, this dip is the babies that were never born. So that's what a dip is. Okay, now our second feature to understand is a bulge. Well, sir, what's a bulge? I'm glad you asked again, thank you. A bulge is the opposite of a dip. It is where there is more people in a particular segment of the population pyramid than there otherwise would be. It usually represents uh, increased birth rate at some period. I've got the um, 2016 population pyramid of Italy here. Italy had, like many developed countries, had the baby boom, right? Bunch of people coming home after World War II, having a bunch of babies, therefore a lot of babies born between 1960, 1945 and 1965. So as these people get older, you have a big, you know, in, a big segment of population in this sort of 45 to 65 year age group. And you can see in Italy, you have a very, you know, quickly declining birth rate, which leaves a bulge here in the middle. This actually suggests there might be problems in Italy if you go further. Once this segment of the population, given another 15 years, that bulge moves through the population pyramid and it ends up up here. You have the biggest chunk of the population pyramid above retirement age, and that can cause a lot of problems with when they need pensions and stuff like that, and there's not enough young working people to pay for them. But we actually have another, more extreme version of a bulge. Look at that. That is United Arab Emirates. So basically the country that holds places like Dubai and stuff like that. Um, we have a massive, a very, this is one of my favorite population pyramids because it's so weird. We have a giant bulge here in the male half, not really reflected in the female half. There's still a bit of a bulge here, but it's certainly nothing compared to this. This, usually people really have a tough time understanding how a population pyramid can look like this, but this population pyramid and the bulge can just be explained by immigration. Basically, Dubai, um, a lot of the cities um, in, in UAE are being constructed, who can, does the construction, usually young male construction workers. So we have this influx of people from all around the world going to places like Dubai to build the city, right? Construction workers, construction managers, crane operators, all that sort of stuff. You have all this influx of people. They're not down here because they weren't born in Dubai. They've moved after they turned 18 to 20 move to earn a lot of money and then leave again. So by the time you get to 60, it's basically back to normal. So bulges can explain either increased birth rates for a certain period or immigration. Thanks so much for that, Cizio. Now you know all the things that you need to do to analyze a population pyramid effectively. You know what bulges are, you know what dips are. Uh, make sure you check us out on Instagram at geography underscore explained underscore online. We'll have another video for you next week. This like one will be a little subscribe. bit different. Yep, like, like and subscribe. hit that subscribe, subscribe button. And uh, we'll yeah. see you next week for another video. Yeah, special one coming next week. Might not be a GM skill. Stay tuned. Check it out. See you then. See you later. Word? Not speak, not sentencing. Hmm. Well, yeah. with the words. Can we go get you an English teacher? Um, yeah, please. I, I Where's obviously Miss Wakeman in, when you need her? Yeah, I need Miss Wake. Can Miss Wakeman please report to CW10? All right. Three. It's three thirty two. seconds in. Wait, 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 wait. No, you don't say one. It's three, yeah. two. And then I'm already thirty five seconds in. Ready? Everyone ready? Yeah. Wait. I think uh, I hang on. Like an hour. Everyone coming? Like. Silence on set, but he's got party cards. Right? My arms are sore. Wait. Three, Hang on, is that a two? Yeah, come next door. No, it's not too hard.
males in the population. What was that, sis? You had one job. I wasn't on my phone. Your one job was literally just, just to be quiet. Sorry. <laughs>